So I'm very pleased to welcome uh, Dr. Dimitrios Lampatis, who is the uh, Director of Master of Financial Technology at the Swayburn Business School, Swayburn University of Technology, Australia. Welcome, Dr. Salampatis. Thank you very much for your kind invitation. I'm so happy to be here. It's been a couple of years that we hear about uh, FinTech. What is it all about? The way I see it is I see a combination of different technologies, for example, blockchain, artificial intelligence, machine learning, cloud computing, biometrics, that normally you would not connect them with financial services. That's the first story. But then you see them being introduced in different ways to provide new products, mm -hmm. new services, new offerings, change processes, mm -hmm. and that creates new business models or innovates within existing business models. For example, who would have imagined using a facial recognition to pay for your bills? Mm -hmm. Who would have imagined to use your fingerprint to access your bank account? Who would have imagined that you used artificial intelligence with a chatbot to talk with a machine and get financial advice? Who would have imagined using machine learning and these kind of applications to have what we'd say the robot advisor using um, augmented processes or using algorithms to define your financial portfolio? Who would have imagined, for example, using virtual reality or augmented reality to check your investments or to check your financial portfolios? Even simpler than that, Everything is very mobile nowadays. You can access your bank account, you can access your funds, you can transfer funds instantly. For example, in Australia, all banks with your mobile phone, you don't need IBAN, you don't need anything, you just put the mobile phone of the person that you wish to send money, and it's done instantly. And of course, if we go even deeper with the discussion about cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin, we also change the inherent nature of what money is how financial services are actually being delivered. Well, there is a discussion, for example, we need banking, but do we need banks? Amazon, Apple, they create financial products which are not financial institutions themselves. Mm -hmm. So we see players who are not financial institutions by, by nature entering into the game and competing with new, new players, but also traditional ones. So that creates more pressure for innovation, that creates more pressure for change, which has, of course, positive and negative outcomes. So is that a threat to the financial incumbents, the classical institutions? Is that a threat? Or is it an, an, an opportunity for mm. them to see the, uh, the fintech wave? Good, that's a very good question. Look, when the whole story around fintech emerged, everybody was talking about disruption. Everybody was talking about banks are dead. Everybody was talking about financial advisors are, are dead. I don't believe in these radical opinions. I, th I really see, and how I call it and how I normally speak about it, I see that these financial technologies are gradually creating what we call an, evol an evolutionary transformation. Mm -hmm. Things don't change from it to the next. And you see, for example, that at the beginning we had all these, I call them cowboys, that they wanted to destroy banks, they wanted to destroy financial institutions. Now you see a more attitude towards collaboration, towards change, towards more of creating a common understanding because on the one hand we have someone that we normally for forget is the customer. The customers are not easily able to change. So normally trust your bank with one zillion negatives that they might banks might have but they are there they are let's say the guardians of money they've got the brand they've got the trustworthy systems on the other hand, you've got a startup or a newcomer into the arena who, who, which wants to compete, but do they have the capabilities? Do they have the means? Would you trust your money to them? They might be technologically more advanced, but we need to always to remember, yes, customers have needs, but customers have also expectations. So how do you see the strategies that uh, to me, To me, the strategies, a strategy is very simple. You, you either forget and say, I'm too big, so I'll never fail, mm -hmm. or they are too small, I don't, I don't mm -hmm. care. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the correct way. You Either you compete directly or you collaborate. I think this is where the whole ecosystem is going, and that's why words such as 
fintech ecosystem, mm -hmm. that's a fintech collaboration, innovation mm -hmm. through collaboration, co-creation. This is these are the things that actually merge. Well, how do you see uh, the success factors to put a, an ecosystem, a fintech ecosystem, that is successful? You need synergies. Mm -hmm. You need traditional financial players, incumbents. You need the new entrants. You need regulation. You need government support. You need incubators mm -hmm. for startups. You need universities. You need investments. You spoke about universities. How yes. do you see the role of universities in the fintech way? Look, the, um, <laughs> there there are a few universities around the globe, and we are one of them, mm -hmm. and you're also yeah, one yeah. of them. Okay. That um, we are playing with what we call this in this fintech education. Mm -hmm. Fintech education, the way that I see it, I see it as the applied understanding of all these technologies into how they are translated into new business models, into new business offerings. On the one hand, you have all these employees working in financial institutions, in banks, in wealth management, in insurance, in, in regulation, in policy, who, believe me, most of them have no clue about, not necessarily how a technology actually operates, but what can it actually do. So the, on the one hand, we need to upskill. Because you, you hear a lot about digitalization, you hear a lot about the industri industry 4.0. Jobs the way we, we know them will change a lot in the future. So skills need to be changed mm -hmm. and we need people who are ready to be employed to and be employable not only for today but also for tomorrow. So how do you see the change in terms of uh, if I will go back to your uh, point of view uh, about the collaboration between uh, incumbents and startup? Do mm. you see that uh, change is easy or do you see that how easy is the change particularly when we, s we know that for example incumbent banks have legacy systems and uh, it's not easy to be as mm. agile as they mm. wish they, uh, yeah. they could but how change uh, could how easy it is? If you check mm. every single report published by big companies, mm. the first thing as a first barrier that they that they put is culture. Systems are there, systems can change, mm. but for me the most important thing is the culture and the mindset. Not only from the incumbents, but also from the new entrants in, in the market. There is a lot of discussion that banks should be more agile, should be functioning as startups. I don't really believe that. I think that architecture is there for a reason. But for me, the most important thing is changing the culture, changing the mindset. And this is also where fintech education can play a very, very important game. Mm -hmm. Because it's about technology, it's about skills, it's about business. But primarily for me, it's about changing the mindset, changing the culture that a banker, the way a banker functions nowadays is completely different as a digital banker will be in the future. So we know uh, too that data is the heart of the financial sector. Absolutely. <laughs> and there is a move. Uh, data is the new oil and it's new oil everywhere. Yeah. And throughout the world, we're start talking about open banking, and, and banks have to open their data and uh, uh, to meet customer needs. Uh, do you believe in the uh, open banking mm -hmm, movement? Mm -hmm. is, is there an added value to the mm -hmm. customer, or what are the challenges in, you know, in terms of open banking? The whole open banking mm -hmm. um, idea that started was really, as I said, data is the new oil, mm -hmm. and it can generate so many new innovations. So the whole idea behind open banking is the fact that this particular data that customers have can be translated in numerous ways. On the one hand, banks probably don't have the right capabilities to do that, or it's also maybe not part of their job. We have to acknowledge that, and there is a lot of discussion that banks should be, te should be tech firms in the future, or they should be, no. An institution of a bank has specific ways and specific mandates that's why we need different capabilities to orchestrate, to be orchestrated together, to use this data in a meaningful, secure, safe, and reliable manner, to translate that in offerings that can be used by banks, that can be used by, by other financial services providers. So, and it also opens up competition, that's, that's for sure. So through the connection of what we call these APIs, different third-party players can plug in into different platforms and get this kind of data, of course, through different restrictions to different protocols and so on. 
So I see competition, I see healthy competition, I see heaps of new opportunities. But on the other hand, we have to understand that all this data is primarily sensitive. It belongs to the customer, so there has to be consent. There has to be there have to be different protocols put in place. So definitely there is potential. I, I'm, I'm certain about that. We just need to see how regulation is going to react. And if I may give a comment, normally regulation is considered as a barrier. I don't believe that. I don't really believe that. It's true that regulation cannot really catch up with technological developments. But on the other hand, regulation is there to act as a safety net. Because when things bounce back, regulation needs to be there to protect. I'm very fascinated with the way technology changes things, but we always need to remember that the customer is in the center, and whatever needs to be done needs to be done for the sake of protecting the customer and providing reliable offerings. So you spoke about social implications of the fintech, and uh, do you <coughs> see, for example, an opportunity that the fintech would help in what we're calling the financial inclusion, uh, reaching people who are underbanked to banks? Uh, is there an implication, an added value definitely, of fintech definitely. in this area? You can't imagine that for us, having a bank account, is we take it for granted. There are millions of people around the globe that don't have access to a bank. They are not able to transfer money. They don't even know what a bank is. They can't have an insurance. They can't have a financial history. So there are opportunities about that. Take, I'll give you a very simple example, which I'm sure you're, you know. Greece and this region at the moment, it has a big influx of immigrants from Syria and from other countries that have been devastated from the war. Many of these people have no records, have no financial information. Blockchain, for example, could play a role in terms of building this financial history. They don't have a bank account, so how are they able to transact? You can potentially do this through a mobile application, for example, that you can have some financial data. There are, for example, they have, people have difficulties. I was talking to a friend of mine who works in the UK. They have great difficulty into opening a bank, a bank account in a normal bank. So many of them go to a, to a new bank, let's say Vault or to these new new banks, and they get it m more easily. Is it safe? Potentially. But at least it gives an opportunity for some more of an equal access to offerings and services that normally a person wouldn't be able to have, or sending money. How many workers, let's say, work here in Canada or in Australia and they need to send money back home? Sending money through traditional channels can be very expensive. So where do you see this fintech uh, mm. is going for the coming years? Yes. Mm. Thank you for the question. Uh, look, I, I'm glad to see that the whole fintech landscape is going beyond the hype. Because mm. we've seen a lot of hype in the past years and mm. we see a lot of discussion, lots of talking, but not much actually being done. But definitely I see more room for collaboration, I see more room for improvement, I see more room for discussion. Um, and again, for me it's all around mindset, it's all around culture, but fintech I see it a lot as being a, a strategic part of many governments, of many changes, many institutions. I really believe that things will move forward and as academics I think we have a very, very big job to do when it comes to cultivating this collaboration. Thank you, Dr. Salafasis, for sharing this insight. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you for the invitation. You. Thank you.